All right, we're going to take a look at some homemade stained glass stands. This is the circular type and would be made with a, a ring roller. There's another one that we're not going to talk about. And a, a different one that uh, is not made with a ring roller. We're just going to be talking about the ones made with a ring roller. And similar to this one. Now here's a tool that I'm not mentioning in my required list of tools. It's a belt sander. And oh, it is very nice to use and produces very good results, but it can be done with a file. You don't have to smooth it with a, a fancy sander. So a belt sander in, uh, in the U.S. at Harbor Freight is about $49. And uh, in Canada, uh, if you check Amazon, they start at about uh, $59. All right, first of all, we're going to take a look at some of the tools that you would require in order to make a metal stand for your stained glass. This is called a ring roller, and that is available at uh, KMS Tools, uh, priced at about $120. Or in the U.S. at Harbor Freight, uh, around $80 U.S. You're also going to need a tap and a tap drill. And here's a set. That's not very expensive. And also you will require uh, some 440 screws. Very small screws. And you can see it has a, a beveled kind of a head on it. It actually sinks right into a hole. In addition to that, you'll need a tap wrench. And you will also require a chamfer tool. This is so that the screw head will fit nicely into the holes that you've drilled. Now, you can use a drill like this if you have a steady hand, but it would be much better if you had at least a drill press. So now we've taken a look at the tools. We'll take a look at the materials. Okay, now let's have a look at some of the materials that you could use. This is 3 16 by one and a half, and for smaller parts, that would work. For, when I say part, I mean whatever you're producing in your stained glass. Uh, that would work. Or you could go to a quarter and probably by two inches at least for heavier, larger stained glass pieces. You would also need quarter inch by quarter inch, sometimes called key stock. And that will be what you put through your ring roller to get that nice curve on it. Now for the clips, take a strip of this sheet metal. I don't know, it's about maybe 40 thou, somewhere between 30 and 40 thousandths of an inch thick. <clears throat> and we'll cut a strip off that <clears throat> And make these clips. Just bend them like that and they fit over top. And just use a little epoxy glue on that and it'll be ready to go. I think we've covered the materials. We'll add to the end of the video if I have forgotten something. Now belt sander isn't absolutely necessary although it's very nice to have. And all we'd be using that for is to round the edges so we don't have any sharp corners. You could do that with a file. Just kind of this action with a file on both sides. Get that rolling action. And you'll be able to smooth that off without the expense of purchasing a belt sander. Now, if you purchase your materials at some place like Metal Mark, you can have them pre-cut to whatever dimension you like. If you don't and you buy them at a metal supply store, an industrial supply store, you're going to have to figure out how long you need it. Use a square, put a line on it, put it in the vise. And if you don't have a power metal cutting saw, you can revert back to the hacksaw method. And pretty well the same for the 
quarter inch by quarter inch. Mark it off where you want it. Hacksaw it off. That'll be a lot easier than the other stock. And uh, proceed from there. Now on this ring roller I have put a plate on here and uh, made it so that I can attach it to my vise so it doesn't move around. It does have holes in it so you can screw it down to a workbench if you don't have a big vise like that. And it's pretty easy to use. You, you take your quarter by quarter stock and move this wheel till you can get it in there. Then you would tighten this wheel and start winding and it would go through and turn. And then you tighten the wheel again and wind back the other way and tighten the wheel again and so forth until you get the right size circle. The circle that uh, would accommodate your round stained glass piece. Now to find the center of your base, let's say this is your base, you would just measure it as six inches so the center would be three inches. And then in this direction you got an inch and a half so you're looking at about three quarters of an inch to the center and once you've got that mark it's a really good idea to use one of these center punch put it on the mark and give it a smack with a hammer that way your drill won't wander when you start to drill now the hole in the base is going to be just clearance for that little 440 screw I'd suggest you use a 764 drill for that. You'll come down on your punch mark and just drill that clearance hole right through. Once you've got your clearance hole drilled, you'll have to swap that drill out for one of these countersinks here. And again, come down and you can actually tr keep trying the depth of this until that little 440 screw falls right in and is flush with the bottom of this because the screw is going to pass through here come out the other side and be screwed into the quarter by quarter material now as far as the quarter inch material you're going to need a tapped hole in the middle now I like to do it while it's still straight. You find the middle and you tap or you uh, punch it like we did with the other piece and you're going to use your tap drill to uh, to drill through and then you're going to have to tap. Now if you use this method that is if you decide to go with I'm going to do it while it's straight make it a little bit longer than what you need it because sometimes after you roll it, somehow or another, that hole doesn't end up exactly in the middle where it should be. And if that's the case, you have enough metal here to hacksaw off one side or the other to make everything even. If you decide to bend it first, you may find that you have a problem getting it to go into the vise. Depending on the curvature and the size, it, you may have trouble getting it aligned properly in the vise. So I'd recommend you go with a straight method put that uh, hole in the middle and make your piece a little bit longer in case you have to cut something off now right now I don't have a piece of this quarter by quarter that is bent into a semicircle so I'll just use this when you put it in the vise make sure that the hole that you or the point at which you need to tap it, which will be a hole because you've just drilled it. And uh, make sure that's right at the top of here. Not a little bit this way or a little bit that way. Try to get it right at the top. Then you're going to take your tap. You're going to take some oil. Any oil will do. If you have tapping oil, that's wonderful, but any oil will lubricate it. And try to keep your tap once you've got it on top of the hole, try to keep your tap perfectly vertical to the jaws in the vise. If you're a little bit crooked, you may find that taps this small break very easily. And that's about the only advice I can give you on the tapping. Now once everything is finished and I'm happy with everything and it's ready for assembly, what I like to do is this is the hole again, this little mark on top. 
is file a flat. Nice and steady. File a flat on here. That gives it more area contact with the mounting surface that it's going to go to. And when I assemble it, once I'm happy, you gotta be happy before you do it, put some epoxy glue around here. And it won't come apart and it won't twist on you. If you'd like to be notified of other new modifications, please click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.